I got the house, so you're no longer needed. Right after the mourning period for my father ended, my husband stood in front of me and said this. I was stunned, staring at the ceiling. Uh, I don't even know where to start. My father had passed away, and while I was busy with the funeral and various other tasks, my husband had apparently been plotting something like this. But James probably doesn't understand a thing. I'm Emily, 35 years old, married for 6 years, and a working housewife. I met my husband at a college friend's wedding, where he was a guest on the groom's side. My husband gave off a friendly vibe and was easy to talk to. For someone like me, who had been focused solely on work since graduating college, spending time with him was a valuable way to step away from my job and have a personal life. A year into dating, my husband proposed, and we decided to get married. The company I work for is actually my father's. Technically, it was started by my grandfather, but my father took over and expanded it into a larger business. After graduating from college, I joined my father's company without hesitation. Today, it's a major trading company known by everyone in the country. My mother is the typical devoted wife, who entered the household upon marriage and supported my father while keeping the home. I think it's no exaggeration to say that my father was able to focus on his work because my mother was there for him. My father understood this and never forgot to express his gratitude to my mother. That's probably why my mother never complained about my father's limited time for family. I have a brother, Robert, who is three years younger than me. Normally, it would be expected that he would take over the family business. Unfortunately, he has no interest in running a company. When he was in middle school, he joined the photography club at the invitation of a friend, and since then, he's been obsessed with cameras. He spent his allowance on new cameras and lenses and was always out taking photos. He went on to study photography at a university of arts and aimed to become a professional photographer. Before he went to college, he told her father, I have no intention of joining your company. I want to be a photographer in the future. He said this with a serious look on his face. My father didn't object. If that's what you decided, then go pursue your dream. I never asked you to join our company anyway. He said this with a smile. He always respected the autonomy of his children. My mother also supported him. Maybe it was thanks to this that my brother won a photography contest while still in university. After that, he steadily pursued a career as a photographer. Now at 32, he's not exactly a famous photographer, but he's able to make a living from his photography work. In contrast, I've admired working women since I was in elementary school, and I've always been very interested in business management. I went on to study economics in college and thoroughly studied management theories and economics before joining my father's company. I didn't know if I could become my father's successor. My father wasn't the type to promote someone just because they were family. Our company has many talented employees, and if my father thought I was less capable than them, that would be it. When I joined the company, I took the interest exam alongside other general applicants. My father didn't want anyone to think I got in easily just because I was his daughter. Until the acceptance letter came, no one involved in HR even knew I was the president's daughter. My father's company is quite a large corporation and the number of applicants is high. The competition was tough, so I was genuinely happy when I got the job offer. After joining the company, I didn't particularly hide the fact that I was the president's daughter, since it would eventually come out. Because we have the same last name, people sometimes ask if we are related, and I answer honestly that I am his daughter. I figured it was better than them finding out later and feeling like I had been hiding it. That's why there were a few people who would gossip, calling me a connection hire. To dispel such rumors, I worked tirelessly, often doing overtime and working on weekends. Perhaps because of this effort, people gradually began to recognize my capabilities. I met James around this time. The men around my age in the company either tried to flatter me because I was the president's daughter or kept their distance, and there was no middle ground. I think I became quite cautious toward men at the company because of this. In contrast, James had nothing to do with the company, so I didn't have to keep my guard up around him, and that was a relief. After getting married, we rented an apartment near the company and started our new life. James was happy to support me continuing to work. Nowadays, it's normal for women to work. Besides, you seem more vibrant when you're working, Emily. We can split the housework. I've lived alone for a long time, so I'm pretty good at it. Indeed, James shared the housework, which allowed me to continue working without stress. James's family lives in a rural area where they run a farm. His parents are simple country folk who were delighted about our marriage. James has an older brother who, along with his wife, has taken over the family farm and lives with his parents. But from what I gather, the brothers aren't particularly close. James said it was because there's a 10-year age gap between them, and they didn't spend much time together growing up. My in-laws and James's brother's family are busy with farm work and rarely come to the city, so we didn't have a formal family introduction. 
We only met when we visited his parents' home to greet them after the wedding and on the wedding day itself. Since getting married, we haven't visited his family at all. I suggested to James that we should visit at least during the holidays. There is never a quiet season on a farm. You'd just be a burden going there without knowing anything about farm life. He said arguing that we shouldn't go and impose on his family. I had no knowledge of farming and I didn't want to be a burden during a busy season. But I didn't plan to visit just to be a guest. I was fully prepared to help out if they were shorthanded. I don't know much, but I'm certainly interested in the process of making things. Still, as James said, having a lay person like me around might just cause more trouble. Since he grew up there, I thought James could teach me, even if he wasn't involved in farming anymore. But James said he never really liked farm work as a child and rarely helped out. So, we ended up never going and time just passed by. In the meantime, my work became increasingly busy, especially after I became a manager two years ago. I was so busy that I often had to work through the holidays. I frequently brought work home and didn't have time to visit my in-laws. I would occasionally call to say hello, but my in-laws never complained and always showed concern for us. They were especially worried about James, which I thought was just natural concern for their son living far away. Every year, they sent us delicious new vegetables, for which we were always grateful. The vegetables from James' hometown is really good, and my parents are always thrilled when I bring some over. My mother always says, We're so grateful they send us such delicious vegetables. You're sending them a proper thank you, right? Work was going well, and I had no particular complaints about married life. We don't have kids, but I thought we were leading fulfilling lives. However, six months ago, my father collapsed at work and was given a terminal diagnosis. It was sudden, and my whole family was in shock, but my father remained surprisingly calm. If there's nothing left to be done, then I just want to live normally, he said. James then suggested we move in with my parents so I could spend some more time with my father. It would also make your mother feel more secure to have you nearby if anything happened. I was also worried about leaving everything to my mother, so James and I moved in with my parents. After that, my father handed over the company to his executives and spent his remaining time with my mother. I hope this peaceful time will last as long as possible. But a month ago, my father quietly passed away with a serene smile on his face. It was a tough time for me emotionally, but my mother kept her composure and handled the funeral with dignity. Seeing her like that made me realize I couldn't just cry all the time. My brother, who was rarely home, cried the most, but I had so much to do that I didn't have time to dwell on my grief. And a few months later, James hit me with this ridiculous declaration. What do you mean you got the house? I mean this house. This grand estate is now mine. I don't understand what you're saying. I'm saying that this house is now mine. Don't make me repeat myself. Are you stupid? I was just stunned by James's sudden statement, thinking, who's this person in front of me? Even so, this house was inherited from my father. There's no way it could become yours. But it can. I've already transferred the title into my name. Oh, I see. That's what this is about. After my father passed away, I was swamped with various succession duties and administrative tasks. When James asked what would happen to the house, I told him I intended to inherit it. He said he would handle the title transfer. I had so much to do with the company and other matters that I thought it would help if he could handle some of the paperwork. Come to think of it, I never saw the documents after that. I signed a letter of attorney, leaving the formalities to James. So he used that to put the house in his name. I never imagined he would do such a thing, but it's too late now. I was shocked by James's attitude as if he were a complete stranger. As I thought about it, I began to calm down. Come to think of it, when we moved in, he kept asking how much this house was worth. At the time, I was so preoccupied with my father's illness that I didn't think much of it. But maybe James had this plan all along. James smirked and said, From now on, this is my house. If you want to stay here, you'll be a servant. Oh, so this is how he smiles, I thought. I guess I was the only one who thought things were going well. If you don't like it, we can get a divorce. Then let's get a divorce. That's the only choice. There's no way I can live with someone who does things like this. Just don't regret it later. Hell no, I won't regret it. Once I get this house, I won't need you anymore. It's worth five million dollars. Looking back, when he first came to visit my family, he was overly excited about our 200 square meter estate. I wonder if he'd been planning to make it his own all along. So that's the kind of person he is. It was my mistake for not seeing through it sooner. At the time of our marriage, I was so keen on not being treated specially as the president's daughter that I was overly cautious around men in the company. I guess I let my guard down around men outside the company. What a mistake. Well, if that's what he wants, I'll just leave the house to him and move out. I packed my things that day, took the divorce papers he had signed, and left the house. The witness section of the papers was already filled in with two names. I didn't know who they were, but both names had the same last name, so maybe they were mother and daughter or sisters. Well, it didn't matter who they were. 
I went straight to the city office and submitted the divorce papers. It felt almost too easy, like, is that it? But I also felt surprisingly refreshed. Well, I'll just focus on my job starting tomorrow. Or so I thought. But the next day, my ex-husband called. And don't you have no more business with me? What's the meaning of this? I just went to the real estate agency. What does with leasehold rights mean? I don't know. With leasehold rights means that the land is leased. Nobody told me that. Isn't this your father's house? The house is, but the land isn't. You're lying. You said it was a mansion. He asked how much the house and land were worth together, and I said about $5 million. But I never said it was all ours. Our family home is quite old. When this house was built, it was common for properties to be leased. I think the lease was renewed every 30 years. When it was last renewed, they said it would be the final renewal. And we'd have to either buy the land or vacate it in the next generation. The house is well built and has sentimental value for my father, but it's unnecessarily large and impractical. We decided as a family that it would be better to find a new modern house rather than renovating this one. The real estate agent told me that this house has a leasehold and the lease is about to expire, so selling it is impossible. Oh, did you think you could sell it? Didn't you check the registration documents when you transferred the title? It should have said it was leased land. I didn't look at that. I just wanted to get it in my name as soon as possible. Too bad, but thanks for the favor. What do you mean? The only thing I inherited that was a liability was that house. What? I mean, even if we wanted to vacate the house, it's so large that it would cost at least $1.5 million to buy the lease. $1.5 million? So thank you for taking it off my hands. Really, I'm grateful. You're unbelievable. I think it's pretty unbelievable to have married a man who took over the house I inherited after my father died and then demanded a divorce. You should understand my feelings of wanting to see some silver lining in all of this. I don't care. This is your house. Do something about it. But you put it in your name, right? It's out of my hands now. Damn it. I didn't know it was leased land. You didn't ask, and it's not something I had to tell you. Besides, you said you wouldn't regret it. So good luck with that. The land is in a prime location, which makes it very valuable, but also very expensive. During my grandfather's time, many people came in and out, and company employees often stayed there. But now the company has proper employee housing, so we don't need a lot of room. There are only three of us, and it's really just my mother and me living there. My brother has already bought a condominium and doesn't plan to live there. Since I planned to move out, I told my mother to take what she needed and move in with my brother while I took care of sorting out the house. I'd resign myself to paying for a demolition, but I never expected things to turn out this way. You never know how life will turn out. After hanging up on my ex-husband, I had a private investigator look into him. I was a bit curious about the names of the two women who had signed as witnesses on the divorce papers. I remember hearing my ex-husband mumble Mary in his sleep once. The investigation revealed that she was an old high school classmate and his ex-girlfriend. The other signature was her mother's. It seemed they had reconnected at a high school reunion two years ago and started dating again. According to the report, their classmates found it amusing and had plenty to say about it. Mary was raised by a single mother who had a notoriously combative personality and would storm into the school whenever something didn't go her way. Many classmates had unpleasant experiences because of her, yet for some reason she and my ex-husband clicked and dated back then. I guess birds of a feather flocked together. But what kind of nerve does it take to have your mistress and her mother sign as witnesses on your divorce papers? I called my in-laws to inform them about the divorce and told them about the affair. My father-in-law was shocked and said, Is he still seeing that crazy woman? Apparently, they never liked her. Back in high school, the two of them often skipped school to hang out, and there were even times they got into trouble with the law. When my ex-husband left the hometown for college, they became distant, which was a relief to his parents. They thought he'd finally settle down when he married me, a decent woman unlike his ex. They hadn't heard from my ex-husband about the divorce yet. Instead, he had recently asked them for money. He claimed that I had made a major mistake at work and caused a huge loss, so he needed about $2 million to cover the deficit. Judging by the amount, it seemed he needed money for the house's demolition and their new life together. I was going to quietly give him the money at first, but my brother-in-law advised my in-laws to check the facts before lending him anything. The more I heard, the more I understood my ex-husband's true nature, and all I could do was sigh. In the end, my ex-husband married me for my money, for the family fortune. I'm beyond sighing now. After that, I made sure to claim proper alimony for my ex-husband and his mistress for the affair. Then my ex-husband angrily called me, demanding to know what the alimony notice was about. What's this notice about? Because you cheated is only natural. You pushed that expensive house on me, and now you want alimony? I never forced it on you. You did it all on your own. 
I have no money left. There's no way I can pay alimony. That's not my problem. You're heartless. I think a man who cheats with his wife's father is on his deathbed and then kicks her out right after he dies is far worse. I have my reasons. Just selfish reasons, right? Don't contact me again. If you have any issues, go through my lawyer. With that, I hung up and immediately blocked his number. In the end, he borrowed more money to pay the alimony. He even went to my lawyer and tried to force him to transfer the house back into my name. But my lawyer reminded him that the way he transferred the house into his own name might constitute forgery and fraud. If he wanted to reverse it, he'd have to admit to how it happened, which would basically prove the fraud. He had no choice but to leave quietly. Now he's working nice to pay off his debts. He begged me through tears to allow installment payments for the alimony, so I reluctantly agreed. Mary broke up with him. When she found out, he had no money, only debt. She's now working nights to pay off her share of the alimony. According to my lawyer, she complained a lot about why she had to pay. Now I live with my mother in a new apartment I bought. My brother's exhibition ended successfully, and he's back overseas taking new photographs. My mother sometimes goes to clean his place and often grumbles. I wish he'd get married already. I feel guilty for not being the perfect daughter or son, but I'm working harder than ever. Interestingly, my ex-in-laws still sends us vegetables. They always apologize for the trouble their son caused, which makes me feel bad for them. My ex-husband often asks them for money, but my brother-in-law firmly refuses. I am determined to become a person who can lead the company like my father did. I intend to keep walking my path with confidence. I'm Sarah, 32 years old. I've been married for four years, living with my in-laws now. They run a restaurant, and while my husband works, I quit my job to help them out. But it feels like I'm doing everything, from getting ingredients early in the morning, preparing, serving customers, to working late at night. My exhaustion is piling up. But my in-laws never let me rest. Even regular customers worry about me seeing how I'm there almost every day. One day, I got news from my younger brother, Tom, that he was getting married to his longtime girlfriend, Hannah. They're both still young, but mature for their age, and both families are supportive. I was really happy, almost as if it was my own news. He invited me to the wedding and asked if I could come. Of course I said I would, but there's a problem. Whether my in-laws will allow me to go or not. Although I'm technically considered an employee, I thought I'd have some paid leave left. I decided to negotiate for three days off. Excuse me, could I have a word? I called out to my in-laws, who were relaxing at home after the store was closed and the final checks were done. My husband, John, was there too, having just come back from work. What is it? He asked, sighing heavily, while all three of them looked at me like I was a nuisance. The tension in the room made it hard for me to speak. Actually, my brother's wedding is in two months, and I was hoping to take three days off. What? You think you can take a break? My mother-in-law asked with a fierce glare, making me nervous. Still, I nodded courageously. I haven't used any of my paid leave, and I'd like to use some now. Oh, so you want to take time off and still get paid? Well, otherwise, if I don't take it, you make me work even on days off, don't you? Fine, just let her have her leave. There's no issue with that. My husband suddenly sided with me, which was a surprise. I looked at him in shock, but he was grinning at his mother. Sensing his expression, Mary also grinned and quickly agreed. I felt relieved and happy to be able to take the days off, practically jumping for joy. The day before the wedding, I prepared to stay at my parents' house for three days and left early in the morning. Since my in-laws and husband were still asleep, I left a note saying I was leaving and drove to my parents' house. The drive wasn't far, only about an hour, and I was excited to see my parents after nearly four years. I'm home. Since I left the in-law's house early, I arrived earlier than expected. Knowing my parents would be awake, I quietly entered the house. As soon as I stepped inside, I smelled breakfast. Oh, you're early. My mom peeked out from the living room, and upon seeing me, she rushed over, smiling. Yeah, I left early. I left my suitcase by the entrance, took off my shoes, and entered the house. Mom grabbed my hand, looking so happy, and led me to the living room. Seeing my mom's face, I felt a warm feeling of being home again. In the living room, my dad was already up, and my brother was sitting at the dining table. They both looked delighted when they saw me. It had been four years, after all. I was thrilled to see my family, and we all sat around the table, chatting about everything. Tom shared stories about his fiance and the upcoming wedding, clearly smitten, which made me smile warmly. My family asked about life at my in-laws, but I avoided discussing anything unpleasant during such a happy time. The next day was the wedding. Tom's bride looked beautiful, and seeing my brother get married brought tears to my eyes. The wedding and reception went smoothly, and we had a great day, but we were all pretty exhausted and fell asleep quickly that night. The next day, I was supposed to return to my in-laws' house, but I wanted to spend more time with my family and get to know my brother's new wife better. I thought maybe I could stay one more day. 
but I knew asking my in-laws or my husband for another day would be impossible. Still, my parents suggested I stay, saying it was a special occasion, and we hadn't spent time together in so long. So I mustered up the courage to call my mother-in-law. I was scared not only about being told no, but also about what else she might say. I distanced myself from my family to make the call, staring at my phone for a while. But I couldn't stand there forever, so I dialed the number. Hello? How long are you planning to stay there? Come back soon. Her tone was clearly irritated, and I hesitantly asked, Could I stay one more day? My mother-in-law sighed loudly and was silent for a while. That silence felt incredibly long to me. I thought maybe it was impossible and was about to start packing to return when I heard her laughing on the phone. You only ever think of yourself, huh? Just don't come back at all. I was stunned and couldn't say anything. Just move back with your parents forever. We don't need useless people here. And John doesn't want you around anymore, either. What do you mean? I didn't understand her, so I asked. But she laughed and told me to figure it out myself before hanging up. Was she serious? I looked at my phone, thinking, and decided to call John. Hello? What? From his tone, he didn't seem too different. Sorry to bother you at work, but I just spoke to your mom. I asked if I could stay one more day, but she said not to come back and suggested divorce. <sighs> Honestly, I don't want to say this, but I want a divorce too. I was shocked. It felt like time stopped. Sure, I'd felt there wasn't much love left between us, but I'd endured life with his parents to protect our marriage. Why? My hands were shaking and my heart was pounding. Depending on the reason, maybe I could fix it. Maybe it was something I could change about myself. Actually, I've met someone else. It was over. Hearing him mention another person, I knew our marriage was beyond saving. That's it then. He hung up before I could respond. I just stood there unable to cry, unable to move. What's wrong? My mom approached me with a worried expression. I glanced at her and behind her I saw my dad looking over. It's nothing. I don't want to talk about divorce on such a joyous occasion. Mom seemed to sense something was off, but didn't press further. I tried not to think about what my mother-in-law and husband said. I spent time with my family and brother's new wife, laughing and talking. But it felt like I was forcing myself to create those happy moments. We went out, talked a lot, and laughed a lot. I was probably clinging to my family, not wanting to be alone. Are you going back tomorrow? Tom's wife asked as we sat down in a cafe while our parents ordered. I'm not sure if I should go back. I couldn't answer right away. Are you okay? You seem a bit off today. Yeah, what's going on? My brother and his wife looked at me with concern. Is something wrong? Tom was always quick to notice when I was feeling down or anxious. No, nothing. I tried to smile, but they kept looking at me. Why are you all staring at me? <laughs> Just then, my parents came back with drinks, laughing at the sight of us. Their arrival broke the tension, and the conversation turned to lighter topics again. But soon after, the mood shifted again when my phone rang in my bag. I saw my mother-in-law's name on the screen. I hesitated to answer, and everyone stopped talking and looked at me. It's my mother-in-law. I'll just step outside. Why not talk here? Why go outside? My mom grabbed my arm to stop me from leaving. She looked serious, not like her usual gentle self. Okay. I answered the phone. Oh, you've been told to get a divorce, huh? <laughs> That's hilarious. I, I'd rather talk about this tomorrow when I get back. You really had no idea your husband was cheating, did you? You were never a fit for our family anyway. Good riddance. He said he'd send the divorce papers. Don't bother coming back. We'll send your stuff later. She hung up, leaving me stunned. Cheating? I stood there holding the phone, feeling numb. I thought I could handle my husband meeting someone else, but learning about the affair was a huge blow. What was all this time spent supporting my in-laws and husband for? Tears started falling uncontrollably. Sarah, what's going on? It's nothing, I replied, still holding back my tears. But we heard something about cheating. My dad's calm, deep voice cut through the silence. My mom handed me a handkerchief as I struggled to hold back my tears. I took it and wiped my eyes, the familiar scent making my emotions overflow even more. Did we hear right? Was it an affair? The air felt thick and tense. My dad's face was calm, but the tension was clear. Yes, that's what we heard. Don't cry, honey. You've done well these past four years. My mom then explained everything she knew. I was worried when you never came home, so I called your in-laws and even had friends check on you. They told me how badly you were treated. I couldn't believe it, and when I called, they either said you weren't there or insulted you, saying you were worthless. Your dad wanted to bring you home, but we decided to wait until you asked for help. I had no idea my parents knew everything. What do you mean? They treated her badly? And I was now quietly furious about hearing my mom's story. We thought something was up. Sister, you don't need to go back there. We'll make sure you get compensated. We have to show them how much you've suffered. Exactly. We'll help you get through this. I apologized, but Tom reassured me it wasn't my fault. 
You've been through enough, and I'm not going to let them get away with it. Then both of them left, saying they had things to do. I was left standing there, stunned. Don't worry, you can stay here with us. A few days later, a letter from my in-laws arrived with the divorce papers already signed by my husband. Feeling a mix of sadness and relief, I signed them and went to the city hall the next day to file for divorce. I was now officially single again. But a month later, something unexpected happened. I was looking for a job near my parents' house when I got a call from my ex-husband. I picked up, confused about why he was calling. What the hell did you do? His angry shout caught me off guard. Since we divorced, no customers are coming to the restaurant and suppliers are canceling contracts. It's because of you, isn't it? I have no idea what you're talking about. I didn't do anything. Liar. Who else could it be? Even though I assisted, I had done nothing. He didn't believe me and said he was coming over with my in-laws to sort this out. I told him not to come, but he hung up, saying to be prepared. Worried, I ran to my mom and told her what had happened. It's okay. She calmly started making phone calls, but I was anxious and tried to find something to defend us with. Don't worry, just wait. A few hours later, my ex-husband and in-laws arrived, all looking furious. What the hell is this? My ex-husband lunged at me, but my father-in-law, Frank, stopped him. Sorry for the sudden visit. Please, come in. My mom remained calm, offering them tea. We all sat in silence for a while, the tension in the room palpable. Suddenly, the doorbell rang, breaking the silence. My mom opened the door, and in walked my brother and his wife, looking serious. Sorry to keep you waiting. My brother sat beside me, followed by his wife. Why is he here? We were told you were coming, so we prepared. My brother took out a stack of papers and laid them on the table. Here are the documents proving your infidelity. We have evidence from your affair partner confirming it, so we are claiming compensation for your misconduct. Everyone except my brother, his wife, and my mom was shocked. What are you talking about? We're already divorced. Didn't you know, even after divorce, if there's proof of infidelity during the marriage, you can still be held accountable? And it's clear you didn't take this seriously. This isn't the point. We're here because of her. She must have spread rumors to the customers. I'll handle this. I am Hannah Johnson, the daughter of the owner of Johnson's Restaurants. Hannah's father runs a famous restaurant chain in the U.S. well known among industry peers. What? Hearing Hannah's last name, my father-in-law turned pale. Why didn't you tell us? Was there a need? I'm surprised a business person like you doesn't know this. Finally understanding, my mother-in-law sat down, looking deflated. We did some research. Until now, Sarah was running things, and she was the reason customers liked coming to your place. But now that she's gone, both customers and suppliers don't want to be associated with your business. If you had treated her well, this wouldn't have happened. Mary couldn't say a word, looking defeated. It's all your fault! My ex-husband tried to hit me, but Tom intervened. Enough already. I won't let you hurt my sister any more than you already have. What are you going to do about it? Did you forget I used to be your brother-in-law? He pulled out a business card from his pocket, showing he was a lawyer at a prestigious firm. I think it's best you leave now. Realizing he had lost, my ex-husband slumped down. Oh, thank goodness. After they left, I found out my ex-in-laws had to close their restaurant due to the loss of customers and suppliers. My ex-husband was forced to resign after his affair was exposed, and he moved away, unable to cope with the fallout. I managed to get compensation from both my ex and his affair partner. I gave the money to my brother, his wife, and my parents as a thank you. Although they initially refused, they eventually accepted. I found a new job, and I'm happily living with my parents, grateful for my family's support. I'm determined to repay them for all they've done for me.